Good night, rabbit lovers. Welcome to the Happy Harvest Homestead. Tonight I have learned some news that is both a good thing and a bad thing. I am choosing to look at this whole situation as a positive thing because it seems like I am never left without interesting content to give to you guys. There seems to never be a dull moment in the rabbit colony. Something or other is always happening, whether it be good or bad. In this case, it's both. A few minutes ago, I walked into the colony and was doing my regular evening chores for the rabbits. And I came across several dead baby kits. It looked like they had been dead for quite a while. So I gathered all of them into one place to deal with later. As I was continuing to do re regular rabbit chores, I was noticing some of the babies are looking kind of skinny. And from the two things, the dead babies, who they weren't wounded or didn't have any symptoms of trauma or anything, and these skinny babies, that led me to think coccidiosis, which is something we had dealt with before. Another one of the main reasons I thought coccidiosis right away was because of the rabbit's strange behavior in this area. This is where we used to have our hay feeder, and like most animals, the rabbits would spill a lot of hay as they were eating it. Then they would poop on the spilled hay, but that wasn't a big problem. I would cover it with new straw to keep the bedding fresh, and so the rabbits did not have access to their poop, and thus coccidiosis would be prevented. But we have recently ran out of pure alfalfa hay bales, and have now been forced to switch over to the half alfalfa, half grass mix, hay bales that we have, and the rabbits have not enjoyed that transition. They much prefer the pure alfalfa. For a few days they went on a little strike and refused to eat it, but then they slowly have come around and as you can see they are now enjoying it even though they don't enjoy it as much as the pure alfalfa. But as part of that they started digging through this bedding, uncovering the fresh layer I put on top. And I don't know what they were eating. I'm assuming it was the bits of pure alfalfa that they had dropped and soiled and pooped and peed on. Like for days and days they would dig way down in there this entire area. I've covered it with fresh bedding now, but it would be completely like scraped and raked aside. There would be all these rabbits feasting on this poop laden old hay. And it was really frustrating because I know that that will cause coccidiosis. And I would keep putting new breading on top and then the next morning I come in and they'd be all messed up again. So eventually I just gave up and thought, well, if they're going to kill themselves by eating nasty food, then might as well do it. They have plenty of places of clean straw, they have plenty of clean hay, they were just choosing to dig way, way down and eat the weirdest, most gross food they could possibly choose. So naturally, when I saw some dead rabbits, I thought, of course, it's the coccidiosis. Kids are more susceptible to it than adults. So I was like, of course, they ate nasty food, it's their fault, and they were dying from it, so that's what I thought. But just in case, I did a necropsy on all of the dead kits. I cut them open and looked at their livers. Coccidiosis is a fancy word for liver parasites, and the liver will have a whole bunch of white spots on it. When it's really bad and they die from it, the entire liver will be covered in white spots. But on all of the four dead kits I found, there was not one white patch of any kind. Of course, they'd been sitting for a few hours dead, so their organs looked different than freshly butchered rabbits, which I expected, but they for sure didn't have coccidiosis. So this has left me scratching my head as to what would have caused this. All of the circumstantial evidence led me to believe it was totally coccidiosis, but unless the coccidiosis spots magically disappear when the rabbit dies, which in my experience hasn't ever happened before, then it's something else that killed them, and I am at a loss as to what did it. One thing that I had noted was kind of like in their stomachs and or in their small intestines, there was, it looked like a weird blockage of some sort. It was like yellow and kind of like, like a bubble with like a little yellow blockage. I don't know if that was like something stuck in their gut and they died that way or if the stomach and the small intestine looked like that just because they were dead for a long time and they were starting to decay and their body stopped working properly and that was the reason. So I am putting that away in my brain as a possible cause but I don't know what would cause that but I do not know for sure if that weird stomach thing killed them or not. So the good news is we do not have another coccidiosis epidemic. And even though the rabbits are making some very poor diet decisions, none of them have died of coccidiosis yet, so that's good.
the bad news is we have an, yet another weird thing killing our rabbits that I don't know what it is and I might have to do some more research about what possibly could be causing this or maybe I won't be able to figure out what it is and just have to let the weak ones die and the strong survive. That is what I'll do anyways. I'm choosing to not even give them immune boosting herbs or apple cider vinegar in their water or anything like that. I want to keep hardy rabbits that don't rely on herbs or apple cider vinegar to keep them healthy. I want them to stay healthy on their own. So until, or if ever, I can figure out what killed these kits, I am just going to put it down as failure to thrive, because basically that's what it is. Any illness or disease is technically failure to thrive. But we still have a whole bunch of kits who are alive and doing okay. Some of the still living kits do look a little thinner than I would like. But as long as they can stay alive and continue to grow on their own, that's fine by me. I am being extra vigilant about keeping their areas clean and trying to prevent disease, even though they're making it really hard for me by on purpose undoing the work I've done. Hopefully this event was just a couple of kits who were either more stupid or more weak than the rest, and they naturally cold themselves and I will just continue to have strong, healthy rabbits survive and thrive and keep them as breeders and then they'll have babies and pass those good genetics on to their kits. It is possible we will have more rabbit deaths though, so I will keep you updated on those and I will continue to do necropsies on them and see if the stomach thing is shared by all the kits and if they have any signs of coccidiosis. So we will see how this goes. Hopefully this all ends in a happy ending with ha still having a whole bunch of hardy, thriving rabbits. And hopefully this is not another most of our rabbits get sick and die and or have to be cold and we only have a few survivors who we just keep babies like crazy until we can build up our numbers again type thing that we've had to deal with last year. So I will see you probably tomorrow for me, but probably just a few seconds for you in a little bit. It is the next morning, and as far as I can see, no other babies have died, so that's really good. Hopefully that continues to be what happens. Of the four kits who I found dead last night, one of them was Acrobat's kit. One of them belonged to Cambria. The third one was one of Tia's babies. And the fourth one was just a plain orange kit. And because multiple mamas have orange babies, I couldn't tell which one it belonged to. So, we have three kits who I can tell who they're from. If it had only been the Angora does who have been raised in cages and who I have not been able to do a lot of selective breeding with, I would think that perhaps it was just that their genetics weren't super honed yet and I wasn't able to keep the best, eat the rest with them. But Acrobat has been selectively picked out as a healthy, hardy rabbit, so one of her kits also had the same issue. And some of the kits were fathered by Ronwin, others were fathered by Ivanhoe, so it's not like they all have the same buck as a father and they're all getting that bad problem from that their dad or anything like that because they have different dads as well. So maybe it is something I'm doing wrong in my setup or my diet or something that I don't know about, but because I don't know about it, I can't really do anything about it. So. So for now, I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing, doing the best I know how, and see what happens. Hopefully, things continue to be like today and no other kids die. I know this is a bit off topic, but I just finished rearranging some of the nest boxes. This nest box is the only one who has kits in it. All the others are empty for now, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to switch them around. I didn't quite like how I had them placed before, so now we have all of the three tubs on this side plus this one that I might move later when the kits are out of it and then the two triangle nest boxes are over there there's room for more nest boxes when I build them along this wall as well as along here and then they still have their food table in the middle so just a slight change in case you guys are confused halfway through the video why it looks different that's why I just moved them all oh no you guys it was a few hours later coming into the colony and looks like another baby is dead or dying. Oh, it's still breathing. Oh my gosh, there's two? The rest of the rabbits are wanting treats. So they're all going crazy, but okay. Here, this one is dead. 
And then this one, here, move out of the way. Everyone move out of the way. Here, this little baby. Oh, poor baby. Oh. Okay, I'm going to dispatch this one, put it out of its misery. I'll be right back. I dispatched the one kit and brought both of them out of the colony so that I wasn't getting mobbed by rabbits anymore. And it's looking like the hope that last night's four who died were the only ones is a vain hope. It looks like a short fur tort who could be either Tia's baby or Zuzu's baby is dead as well as another one of Cambria's kits. So still not really much of a pattern. They're from different dads as well as different moms. I will do a necropsy on them as well and see what their insides look like. Maybe this time I'll be able to get some pictures now that it's not nighttime. But this is so sad. Right now, you are looking at the two rabbit livers that were from both of those dead kits. As you can see, there is no white spotting whatsoever. Even though they're really small compared to a regular butchered rabbit, they look completely normal and healthy. I'm really glad I was able to come in and see that one kit dying and put it out of its misery so that I could have a fresh carcass to look at. And that other kit wasn't really dead for that long either. So in both of them, I was looking through their organs and I didn't see any abnormalities. I did not see any of that yellow blockage or bubbles or stuff that I saw in the other four who were dead last night. So I'm guessing that was caused by them just sitting for a long time. In both of these two new ones, it was completely normal. Everything looked fine. I carefully combed through their stomach and liver and intestines and was feeling things. I didn't even feel any like weird, hard places. Of course, they were both much smaller than a regular butchered rabbit, so things were a little bit different, but as far as I could tell, there wasn't anything the matter so I am at a loss really as what is going on now before I had that slight possibility that it was that weird stomach blockage thing but that was not the issue with these two so I'm really gonna have to dive in and do some research and see what could be possibly causing this and with that I am preparing myself to go through a whole bunch more kits and have them die before we figure out what the issue is but even though I've not dealt with this particular thing before, I've dealt with things like this before and I already know what to do. Just let them die and keep the good ones as breeders. I was hoping this year was going to be the year of so many good meat rabbit kits because I was doing everything right. No coccidiosis, no pasturella. We'd gone through all of those things already. So this was the year of the finally everything working out how it was supposed to. But I guess that's not what it's going to be anymore. This year is going to be the year of new mystery disease and learning about it all. But on the bright side, those both those livers looked amazing. So even though those rabbits were eating some very strange things deep in the bedding and they're living in a colony all around their poop, they're not getting coccidiosis at all. So that's a really good thing. And this evidence that you can see that in this respect at least of the coccidiosis issue, I'm being a good rabbit raiser and doing a good job, that is good to see. But like, do you see that wee little baby? It'll just look so skinny. And then this one's in some strange lighting, but you can see too, it just, it looks so skinny. And I don't know what's causing it. Just all of a sudden, this issue starts popping up. And then look at this one. He's just so bony. Oh, I can feel it. I can feel it, boo. It's so sad. You're just so, so bony. I'm so sorry. I don't know what to do for you. I don't know how to make it better. Oh, babies. It's hard to tell with these Angora kits, though, because they're so big and fluffy. Hard to tell if they're bony or not. Oh, you kind of feel bony, yeah. Oh, so sad! But Ivanhoe is still looking as big and as bulky and his, his coat is as lush as ever. He doesn't look like he's changing at all. I don't know, Is I guess we switched hay recently. Is that the cause? But it's just the babies who are having issues. All the parents look fine. Even the older kits. The ones we're keeping like Rose and Willowa. Leandrin and Nevaeh, they look fine. It's just these little babies. It's like they're more susceptible to something. I don't know. Oh, I just don't know.